trust a claim that he found as best as it being covered. And then the FDA, to their credit, tested. They investigated. And the FDA said, nope. A spokesman for the FDA, and here's uh, uh, an article about Dr. Lewin Langer. Maybe he retracted, maybe he didn't. Who knows? But the FDA says the results of our testing, no detectable content of asbestos. And only minor amounts of another five not taken. But in J and J, the FDA said Dr. Langer got it wrong. FDA has no interest in this case. It's trying to protect the public health. And then when Dr. Langer actually had to stand behind the peer review literature, in the peer review literature, when he actually had to uh, publish a paper that talked about his testing of um, talcum powder products, for Johnson baby powder and Johnson's for 4 and 20, both Johnson baby powder samples, in the pre-publication draft that uh, scientists sent J and J as a courtesy, and they said something, oh, there's something wrong about J and J getting draft. There's no evidence J and J ever changed a word of any stuff. Scientists, no scientists of J and J, they said as a courtesy, it's a, your, your product, here's the draft. The final results were the same in the draft as they were in the published paper. No asbestos, Dr. Langer, publishes <coughs> to the peer-reviewed scientific community. When he actually had stand behind and defend the scientific results, he published there was no asbestos in Johnson & Johnson's paper. Because that's the truth. And the FDA agreed with that. And actually, you saw the best experts in the, in the world agree with that. J.A.J. had sent it out again, laying the Langer samples to uh, independent experts uh, to test when they found no asbestos. And then you saw on Mount Sinai, where Dr. Langer worked, admitted they made a mistake. And you know, when you have a big company, it's sort of like, like a big family. Sometimes people say things that aren't right or embarrass you. And, and you saw some documents where people, uh, uh, one guy at J&J was calling anybody that criticized talcum powder an antagonistic personality. Well, that wasn't a very good thing, right? But you know what? If somebody falsely accuses you of something, get mad. Like, we don't have asbestos in our baby powder. The best labs in the world have tested MIT, Princeton. We don't have it. And they get mad. It's like, that's not right for you to be saying that. So yeah, they went in to Mount Sinai and they, they, they showed them all this data and they said, this is not right. And Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai they didn't want to issue the press um, report that they had made a mistake because it was embarrassing for them. They're like, let's just let this blow over. But James was like, no, that's not right. You caused all this false alarm about our product. And so Mount Sinai said, yeah, we made a mistake. And they issued this press release, they stood up and they did the right thing. Any implication in the news stories that most of the top and powder currently on the market contains asbestos is not borne out by the most recent data from the FDA. The most commonly used baby top has been consistently free of asbestos. That's the day and day product. It is the opinion of Mount Sinai's Department of Pediatrics that baby top is a useful and safe product. And then the plaintiff's lawyer uh, said, oh, that's because somebody at J&J was on the board of Mount Sinai. Where's the proof that he had anything to do with this? Everything's sinister, innuendo, suggestion, without evidence. The FDA agreed. And Mount Sinai said, yeah, we messed up. Dr. Langer messed up. And you know what? When Dr. Langer published his paper, he didn't find his best. He found his other stuff. And Mount Sinai has no problem blowing the whistle on companies. They're famous. For, for actually Dr. Solikoff at Mount Sinai, you heard was the first one that found that asbestos causes was a good problem. Mount Sinai has no problem blowing the whistle on corporations in this issue. And they, but they realize that Dr. Langer messed up. And there's no asbestos in baby powder or shower shower because Johnson & Johnson has been looking for it and screening for asbestos-like particles since the 40s. You saw that they have, and this is not the only product J&J makes, they have the most sophisticated quality assurance, quality control. Uh, some of you who work for companies know about this kind of stuff. They know how to test and make sure products are safe. And they have very detailed specifications where you have to use microscopes, even back in the 40s and 50s, uh, to screen out any kind of asbestos-like particle. And then you saw in the early 70s this uh, standard by industry, and the FDA was involved in coming up with a testing standard after the scare, and there was a determination that testing with x-ray and polarized light microscopy uh, would, would detect asbestos down to one-tenth of one percent. And so the FDA and industry said that's the testing we're going to adopt. And uh, 
Uh, it wasn't a regulation, but the FDA was on board with, uh, they were part of the testing procedures and protocols, and we'll talk about the round robin. And J&J made clear in this document, we know that the industry's adopting this, the X-ray and the Polaroid bike, but you know, we've been doing more than that for years. We've been doing that plus the TEM, the expensive super duper down to 25,000 uh, magnification, 800 times smaller than a grain of sand. We can find parts per million. And we've been doing that as part of our regular protocol since 1973. And you saw Dr. Hawkins said they were doing it uh, on some stuff since 71, but certainly on all of their lines since 73. They were using the TEM on the ground door, using X-ray and PLM, the microscope on the flash drive tap, using another kind of microscope, looking for all these things with all these microscopic uh, techniques to make sure they didn't have any asbestos in baby powder, including as a double check, sending it out to Macron again, uh, the quarterly final composite top of powder. Make sure on a regular basis. Exceeding industry standards, substantially exceeding. Even their experts said, yeah, they were they were exceeding, yep, they were doing way more than others. Way more than the industry. Now, of course they were. They knew people were using this on babies. They had babies themselves. There's no way they're going to sell baby powder that has asbestos. And so they did what's called a composite sample. And you guys heard what that's about. That's, so you get a representative sample. And I think you heard the plaintiffs were saying, well, for TEM, I they were saying, oh, we chomped these breath mints. And you know, you guys didn't test any more than a breath mint by TEM. Well, that's because then you heard Dr. Compton talk about, that's because the TEM microscope is you have to look at particles down to millions of a, of a percent. So you only can put a little bit. You can't put a ton of stuff on these teeth. A little tiny speck. And so that's a representative sample for a TEM microscope. And they do statistical analysis to make sure whatever they're testing is representative of the whole. A very sophisticated, as you'd expect, from a company like J&J &J, uh, protocol to make sure that the final samples meet their testing requirements, including their absolute mandate that their product be asbestos free. And they concluded, the testing concluded again and again that there was no asbestos in Johnson & Johnson's health powder. And they took composite samples off the line every hour, every shift, five days a week, 49 weeks a year, over 170,000 samples. And they sent it out, not to anybody, they didn't send any Tom, Dick, and Harry. J&J didn't fool around, they went to the best lab in the world. Dr. Macron's lab, even Dr. Longo has testified, literally the best in the world. In fact, Macron's lab trained Dr. Weber, their other expert, on how to do TEM. They were the experts. You think Macron's going to put their considerable reputation on the line of a company sell baby powder that has asbestos to babies? You think MIT and Prince is going to let that happen? You think the FDA is going to let that happen? To believe Plaintiff's case, you have to believe there's some big conspiracy. That all of these people said, oh yeah, let them let Jay <coughs> kill asbestos and kill people. And you have to believe that Dr. Longo, the guy who never tested the product, the guy they paid 30 million, the plaintiff's lawyers have paid 31 million dollars to, he's the only guy that knows how to test. The only guy to find the truth. Ask yourself, do you think you don't like big companies that not make sense? And we're calling the best lab in the world. Said since 1971, when they started doing this for J&J, the Windsor product, that's the Vermont top that J&J used in top and powder, free of asbestos. Always been our opinion, and continues to be our opinion, based on 15 years of closely examining the product. That's the best lab in the world saying that. They don't have an interest in this lawsuit. They're saying that independent of the lawsuit. And then you heard a triple check. J&J had this worldwide top monitoring program. Even all the quality assurances on the line, all the testing, all the quarterly testings. Then they would say, everybody around the world, send your samples from the warehouse back. We're going to make sure that we don't have asbestos in baby powder. That's not something, and that's not, and another thing that doesn't make sense. something you're going to Baby powder's on the shelves. Everybody can test it if they want to. It's been on the shelves for 125 years. And they, they call back all their samples, not all, but it's representative samples from the warehouse. And they tested it again and had them come and do TEM of all these uh, microscopes and found no asbestos in their product. And they continued to do these worldwide audits over the years, 70s, 80s, 90s, up to today, as you heard Dr. Hawkins talk about. And again and again, 
clean. The pot is clean. Then you heard Dr. Weber say, well, the reason why Macron and others weren't finding asbestos is because you handcuffed the analysts with your protocol that you had to find five fibers or 20 if they were different. But that wasn't the truth. Then you heard what we did, what J&D did, they don't know anything about TDM. They went to Macron. This is Macron's published method on top. They just copied it. The method was Macron's method. And the five fibers had nothing to do with counting. It was what you needed to give a weight. When you have these invisible, almost unmeasurable trace amounts of something, you can't weigh it unless you have a couple. And so they said to weigh it, you need five. But you still count it. Here's J&J's protocol. Every effort is made to possibly identify any fiber. Each asbestos mineral is recorded. They record each and every fiber. You count all, you call it asbestos only if it is asbestos, but you still count it if it's not. And then you saw all the evidence where Macron, this is some ore testing with some straight contaminant, and we'll talk more about this fire. But they recorded it if it was one. There's lots of evidence for recorded if it's one. So this thing that Dr. Weber talked about, oh, you handcuffed the analyst, you didn't record it unless it was five, it's just not the truth. They recorded it if it was one. And then you hurry up to this scare in the 70s, J&J, &J, in addition to going to Macron, MIT, uh, Princeton, they went to Dr. Pooley, and you heard a fair amount about Dr. Pooley. Their own expert, Dr. Brody, said that Dr. Pooley was one of the most well-respected testing experts in the world. And again, J&J &J didn't go to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. They went to the best experts in the world, and the reason Dr. Pooley was so good at it is because, as you heard from Dr. Tanus, there's a lot of problems with asbestos in the UK uh, and, and Wales at the time. And he had a lot of expertise in testing and he actually went to J&J's mines in Italy and in Vermont, and he said, he got some tremolite, and we told the FDA about that, and we'll talk more about that, but it's not asbestos. And he went back to 1949, testing these, the five zero tops, the Italian top that J&J used in Great Britain and the United States, there was a dispute about that. Uh, and he said that there was no asbestos in shipments in 1949, and he said the same thing about the Vermont top, not asbestos for and then, to the government's credit, again, they didn't take everybody's word for it. They actually went in the Vermont mines themselves, right? NIOSH, again, people that don't have an interest in this case. The government, and scientists from the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, scientists from the uh, Occupational Safety and Health Agency, two government agencies, and scientists from Harvard, they actually went into the Vermont mine, and they took their samplings all over the Vermont mine, and they took bulk samples of the product from the Vermont mine, and they tested with the best uh, methods available, the petrographic microscope, the x-ray, and the step scanning, and the transmission of the super duper microscope. No asbestos, they couldn't find it anywhere. And none of the air, air sampling, nowhere in the mine, none of the bulk samples. These were three mines, including J&J. &J. The government said, you know what, baby powder is so popular, and this is so important, I'm going to go in the mine myself with my scientists and with Harvard. And look, the facts and the science and the peer-reviewed published literature doesn't add up, doesn't support the loss of the story, the loss of the picture. And the FDA continued to test. In 2009, 2010, they went again, they used the TEM uh, microscope and the PLM, the polarized mic, the two super super duper and the other one is pretty, pretty uh, sensitive. And they, they looked down to parts of a million. Limited detections down to almost nothing. And they found no asbestos in Johnson's baby powder, no asbestos in shower to shower. Uh, again, people have no interest in this case. But the best evidence I submit to you. Not for plaintiffs or not for defendants, but for the public health. And you know, when you don't have evidence to support your case, you criticize and you attack and you go after it. Like, oh, the FDA didn't know how to do it. Oh, MIT didn't know how to do it. Oh, Princeton didn't know how to do it. Oh, the epidemiology studies are no good. Where's their evidence? This was Dr. Weber's method, as you heard. Now he's critical of what they did. But the FDA, independent, contracted a lab who used Dr. Weber's e lab method, used the super microscope, and found by two methods, no asbestos in J&J's. Independent experts agree. 
people that have no use in this law. MIT, Dart, and Carnegie Mellon, Princeton. Are they all in on this conspiracy? Or is the truth that there is no asbestos exchange in the And then they come up with this constant, you've heard a lot about the concentration of it. Well, they had to come up with something to explain away all of these test results that found no asbestos in James' How do you explain away all of these test results? So they, well, even though Dr. Long never did it before for talcum powder, uh, uh, and even though it's been around forever, as he said, having that uh, density liquid separation, he comes up and says, the reason no one can find it but my lab is because I'm concentrating and it's more sensitive. I'm making the talc go to the top and seeing asbestos on the bottom. Well, Dr. Brown, the Rutgers professor who actually was the first to publish on the method, she said, that's not true. It's not more accurate. It's equally accurate. It's just faster. Dr. Wong uses Dr. Brown's method, and she published, it's not more sensitive. It's equally accurate. This concentration is the thing is just a story they had to make up to explain away all of the negative testing. And does it even make sense that Dr. Longo, the $31 million expert, is the only one who knows how to test those tests? It's not MIT, not Harvard, not NIOSH, only Dr. Longo. And, and Dr. Brown didn't use her polarized light, but didn't use TEM. If you use TEM, you don't have to concentrate because you're getting down to the most sensitive parts per million. And then the reason that the government and J and J and others don't use heavy density liquid se se separation as a test it's because you can't find the most common form of asbestos. Does it make any sense to concentrate to test when you can't find the most common form of asbestos and that's chrysotile asbestos and you can't find it? Uh, both those experts admit you can't find it. Why would you use a method where you can't find the most common form of asbestos? And here's the FDA. Again, the FDA involved uh, here. And uh, the plaintiff uh, showed you, uh, I think, an answer to interrogatory where J&J &J said there's no pre-market testing required by the FDA. Well, that's true because talcum powder's been on the market for 125 years before the FDA even existed. And so for products that have that history of safety, the FDA... Yes, Your Honor. This is outside the scope. Thank you. Thank you. 